The Red Sox future looks really bright. This is a statement that can be said after they DFA'd a reliever who has been seriously struggling to find success in a Red Sox uniform this season. You are locked on Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Red Sox, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate and current host of the Boston Balling Podcast, here to bring the latest in all things Boston Red Sox Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed. Quite a few little moves have gone on with the Red Sox um, over the last 24 hours or so, so I'm going to be diving into today a lot of shorter term moves that really, really make the long-term future of the Red Sox look brighter. So that's a lot of what today's episode is going to be about. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Red Sox and making the show your first listen of every day. The first thing I have to say is Richard Blyer is gone. Bye, see ya. Don't want to see you up in the Red Sox organization anymore. Throwing another pitch in a Boston Red Sox uniform. I have made this so clear on the show. I do not like Blyer. I think he's seriously struggled this season, and he has not given me confidence at all that he can be a reliable piece for the Red Sox moving forward. So the Red Sox did announce on Monday that he was being DFA'd, and they are calling up Dinelson Lamette, who they signed um, a couple months back, and I kind of talked a little bit about on the show what it could mean for the Red Sox, but Blyer just really could not produce. A lot of time when he was brought into a game, he would um, give up more runs and not be able to deliver when there was traffic on the bases. So if he was brought in in a close game, it was usually never good because he would a lot of times put the game out of reach or feel like it was out of reach. He had a 528 earned run average over 30.2 innings of work, recorded 15 strikeouts to go with five walks and averaged 3.2 Ks per walk. He also gave up 18 earned runs this season and the opponent's batting average was 306. He was a very, very hittable pitcher. He allowed four runs in four innings in August. Um, He very much was just not having a season that was up to par when it comes to the Red Sox. Um, So it makes sense to me that he was the logical choice to let go because he was a weaker link out of the bullpen. The corresponding move to that was they called up Dinelson Lamette, who um, had a 270 ERA in 30 innings with the Woo Sox. He was was basically averaging um, 3.3 walks per nine, and about 7.5 strikeouts per nine innings. This makes sense to give him a chance at the big league level. Um, I think, you know, this whole situation, bringing up Lamette and DFA and Blyer, shows me that the Red Sox are really trying to figure out who will work next season and who they want to be there because, you know, the chances of them making the playoffs now after that horrid, horrid sweep of the Blue Jays that they witnessed is looking more and more slim. It's just not looking great saying, you know, I feel confident that they'll make the playoffs because I'm just not. Um, But the Red Sox maybe have the same mentality if they make the playoffs this year, it's a bonus. But they're really focusing on next year and beyond. And Lamette, if he comes up and he's able to produce this season, then that's great because that means that he can be a piece that they can really look to to rely on moving forward into next season and past that. Um, But if he comes up this season and he just doesn't pitch well, then they try to figure out, okay, what can we do to, you know, fix him? Is there something that we're noticing about his play that could be different? Um, So basically I think it's a good plan because it gives them time to really see what, to expect from him before they get to the point where they're really, really trying to be competitive. Now is absolutely the time to do a trial and error type of situation and experiment 
with players like this who you signed and has been lingering in AAA and you get a chance to see how he'll perform at the major league level in a Red Sox uniform. So I think this whole move screams to me, you know, Blyer wasn't getting the job done and this move might be an upgrade from him that can help us be a little bit stronger here down the stretch. But even if he doesn't really make a difference this season and we don't make the playoffs, then we can really figure out like, okay, what do we need to work on with him going into next season to make sure that he can produce and be the type of pitcher that we can really rely on going forward. So this raises a couple of questions for me, which are, um, you know, where do the Red Sox see themselves now relative to when they see themselves actually competing for a World Series? So do they see themselves being a World Series contending team in 2024? Is it 2025? What exactly is the timeline that they see for that? And also to kind of go along with that would be um, who do they envision being on the roster longer term when they do get to that point where they're really trying to compete? So this is going to be the type of situation where Lamette gets called up. I see him staying up for the next couple months. Um, If he really, really struggles to the point where it's unwatchable, then maybe they just let go of him. But I don't see that happening right away. I think now that, you know, their playoff chances are looking a little slimmer. Not that they're not trying to make the playoffs, but more like I think they value more having a a team going forward next season and past that, that can confidently be a World Series contending team. So if they bring him up and he doesn't pitch well a couple times, I think they would let that go and continue to work with him and develop him because they want to really shape out their roster for 2024. So I'm interested to see how he performs with the Red Sox. You know, he was struggling before the Red Sox signed him, but they seem to feel like they can figure out how to fix him. And there was obviously something they really liked about him. So I'm interested in seeing, you know, what the Red Sox actually do to really feel like they've made him a better pitcher because, again, the Red Sox need the pitching depth. And if they identify a good pitching talent, they have to hold on because, The pitching has definitely been a serious problem for them over the last few years. It's a blatant weakness. um, And we see things starting to come together from the standpoint of in the future. Hopefully, Houck and Whitlock will be a huge part of that and be able to be really strong either out of the rotation or out of the pen, depending on where the Red Sox put them. And Lamette could be a really strong reliever that can help the team in the future. So I'm really big on this move Blyer completely was overdue with getting let go. He had overstayed his welcome significantly in my opinion. And I think it was time for them to part ways with him. And by doing this, they're also bringing up a guy who still has to prove himself and hasn't had a chance yet to showcase what he can do at the major league level. So it could end up being an upgrade. And if it's not, if he comes up and he seriously struggles at least they know that and they can work with that moving forward. So this is totally a move for, hey, we're still trying to look out for our future and whatever happens this season, we're building a team that can contend for years to come moving forward. Coming up, I'm going to be talking about a pitcher who is back with the Red Sox after quite an interesting journey and story. Um, So I'm going to be going over all of that next. If you're ever in a situation where you feel like you need help working through a life situation where you are lost and don't know who to go to, BetterHelp has you covered. It truly, truly can help with matching you with the right person that can relate to what you're going through. And you can really talk to them and they can help come up with solutions to help make your life better. It's really, really awesome. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MLB. I know I've benefited before from therapy. It really, really helped me out a lot with um, just 
different life issues and struggles that I was going through. Um, and that could be really anything. So better help is your solution. They can absolutely match you with the right person for you and be able to help you work through those problems. Don't forget also, you can catch every pitch of the Red Sox hometown broadcast for games with Sirius XM on the SXM app. So go to the Sirius XM app and search Red Sox and you won't miss a single pitch. You can have every pitch of the home broadcast on there. So definitely check that out as well. So for those of you who don't know, the Rule 5 draft basically allows baseball teams without a full 40-man roster to select certain non-40-man roster players from other clubs. So it has to be a player who isn't on the active 40-man roster for another team. The Red Sox did this with Garrett Whitlock. They actually snagged him from the Yankees in the Rule 5 draft, and it's worked out for them. Um, So the Phillies grabbed a Red Sox pitcher named Noah Song in the Rule 5 draft. He was a fourth-round pick by the Red Sox in 2019, which was actually the highest draft pick in Naval Academy history. And he looked to be a promising pitching prospect in the Red Sox system when they did draft him. But then he had missed four years of development while serving in the U.S. Navy, so it kind of put him behind. Um, And then when it came to protecting and unprotecting players – in the Rule 5 draft, the Red Sox left him unprotected in December. Likely that's probably because they knew he hadn't pitched professionally since 2019, so they didn't want to take the risk because they felt like he would be probably pretty rusty since he hadn't pitched in a while. But the Phillies took a gamble and selected him. And, um, you know, obviously with him being in a situation where he had to kind of catch up, he joined the Phillies in spring training in 2022 Um, but was placed on the 60-day injured list with a lower back strain a few weeks later. So he really was not getting a lot of reps in with the Phillies. And based on the Rule 5 draft rules, you need to keep a player on the active 26-man roster for 90 days or release him. And with the Phillies being a team now that is looking like they could really make the playoffs and their focus is on trying to pursue a playoff spot. It didn't really make sense for them to have him anymore. Um, So he first appeared in a minor league rehab game on June 28th and began working his way through the minors this summer in an attempt to stick on the Phillies big league roster. But then obviously, like I said, there was just not really a spot for him anymore. So they DFA'd him. And basically what else happens with the rule five draft is he has a certain amount of time to basically be picked up by another team or he gets returned to his original team. So basically the deadline on Friday was basically the day that teams had to decide if they wanted to claim him. That deadline passed and he went unclaimed. So basically the Red Sox, you know, decide, Hey, we will take him back. And they did. It's just they pay a $50,000 fee to get him back. So not really anything too bad, but they decided they wanted him back. Um, He hasn't really gotten a lot of reps pitching, and that obviously can be a bit of a concern. But I do see this as a win for the Red Sox because in the summer of 2019, he did pitch well for the Red Sox organization. He had a 106 ERA with 19 strikeouts and five walks and 17 innings. So he'll be starting off in high A Greenville, the Red Sox announced. Um, And this is when, because it basically gives the Red Sox more minor league pitching depth, which is something they need. Um, And they can really take their time developing him for the future. I think when the Phillies took a chance on him, they were in a bit of a pinch and he didn't really get that time to really get back into the swing of things on the mound after all the time that he had taken off. Um, And so with the Red Sox, you know, whether he works out or not is still obviously something that is to be determined. But if the Red Sox are able to develop him and take their time and figure out something with him, um, then he could be a really good depth option moving forward. And the fact that they're not in a rush and they now have him back in their system why not take the risk and just try to develop him 
as much as you can, because then maybe eventually he ends up being a weapon for your team. And if not, he could be a good trade piece down the road if he shows a lot of potential and just doesn't really fit in anymore with what the Red Sox are trying to do. So these Rule 5 draft picks, it always gets interesting with the rules. But because the Red Sox have him back in their system now, it gives them that flexibility to do what they want with him and really work with him to get him into, um, you know, the player that they want him to be and try to turn him into a pitcher who can provide later value down the road. And I also feel like mentally, you know, this could have been a huge struggle on him trying to fight for a spot on the active roster with the Phillies, not knowing what the future was going to hold for him or what his destiny was going to look like and being able to come back, um, you know, and get another chance with the Red Sox, knowing that that risk isn't as prevalent. Because imagine being in his shoes when that 90 days are starting to, um, you know, pass through and that deadline is coming up and you're deciding, you know, like, okay, what are we going to do with this guy? And the player knows that he's constantly being evaluated and has to perform that has to be nerve wracking for a player because these players, when they're at the minor league level and they haven't made it yet, there's no guarantee that they're going to make it all the way up to the majors. Baseball is such a hard sport to work your way up to the big leagues. Um, and so I feel like for song that had to have taken a toll on him mentally. So now that he's out of that and he knows that he's getting another chance with the Red Sox, hopefully he can just focus primarily on baseball get himself adapted to being in the Red Sox organization and they can take their time bringing him up. Cause I do expect him to take a little bit longer of a period of time than some other pitchers to get up to the majors because he took so much time off. So he might have some unforeseen setbacks um, that might take him time to kind of grow back into being a competitive pitcher. I'm sure his velocity is probably down. So they're going to have to focus on getting that back up for him too, um, because, you know, it was just unfortunate that he tried to have the opportunity in 2022 and then got injured. So he really hasn't been able to catch a break. And it made sense for what the Phillies are trying to do not to have him, you know, around the team anymore, because it's not worth it for them to try to wait it out and see if he can contribute. Whereas the Red Sox can afford to wait it out because they're very much a bubble team and they're not in like all in with winning now mode. Um, and so they can afford to really see the potential he has at the lower levels and then eventually bring him up. So I'm excited to have him back in the organization. I definitely think there's some upside there. The Red Sox obviously saw something they liked when they drafted him. And I don't think that's really going to change. I think hopefully he can come and he can be able to contribute um, and at least just really be a solid depth option for the Red Sox if they ever need to call up a pitcher. So I'm definitely interested by it. The Rule 5 draft always make things interesting, but ultimately because the Phillies, you know, DFA'd him and he was sitting on waivers and nobody claimed him, according to the rule, the Red Sox get that choice of, of um, you know, taking him back. So glad that worked out for them, and we'll see how he's able to contribute at the big league level. I'm hoping it's quite a bit. Coming up, I'm going to be talking about a Red Sox young stud that's in the system that got an exciting announcement the other day. So I'm going to be talking about him coming up next because I think he's going to make a huge difference when it comes to um, the Red Sox future. If you're ever looking for car parts or are completely lost as to what your car needs, head to eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right fit, parts the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. 
Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Motors definitely has you covered. I've never had a single issue with them. They'll absolutely help you out and make sure you have everything you need. So in the 2023 draft, the Red Sox selected a very, very exciting young stud catcher in Kyle Teal. He is very, very solid, had a really good senior season in Virginia um, and was just making an impact in a lot of different areas of the game. He's super athletic, has a really strong arm and really good leadership skills, according to kind of what a lot of people who have worked with him in the past have said. Um, so coming off of a really, really strong season in college, the Red Sox would have been dumb to not make the move when they did because he fell to them in the draft class. And it's so rare to have a strong catcher that can really, really be a, an asset to your team in the future because catchers, I feel like sometimes don't end up staying as catchers because you really need to have a unique talent to be a catcher in the majors. But Teal is somebody who has spent time in the outfield, has the capability to play in the infield, but has a great chance to stick with catching because of how strong he really is behind the plate. Um, he spent a really, really short stint in the Florida Complex League. He played in two games there. He bashed his first professional homer on Saturday in the league. Um, he hit two singles, a two-run homer, and drew a walk and scored two runs to help lead the FCL Red Sox to a win. His first game on Thursday, he went over two with two ground outs, but um, he was hitting 429 overall in his short stint with them. And so because of that, the Red Sox announced on Monday that he was promoted to high A Greenville, which is super fast. It's really, really rare that a team moves through the system that quickly and gets promoted that quickly, but that – says a lot to me about the type of player he's going to be and how the Red Sox are going to be able to use him going forward. Because when a player first gets drafted, you know, you know, it's going to be some time before we see this player actually up at the major league level. So you can get excited about a lot of the players that you have coming up, but it's not necessarily saying, oh, this player is super good. So he's going to get called up tomorrow. That's not really how it works. Like they have to jump through a lot of hoops to actually get up to the majors. And the fact that this kid already got promoted to high A definitely says a lot about his ability and what the Red Sox saw from him when they drafted. And when you think about the Red Sox future, there's a lot of young talent in the system and it's all going to make sense what they're trying to do when those players are able to come up and really help produce regularly. And I throw Teal into that mix. The catching situation right now for the Red Sox has improved over the season because Connor Wong's development has been absolutely huge. I don't think anybody expected him to really, really come as far as he has. But again, he was catching so much. So when the Red Sox, you know, had him working so many consecutive games, it benefited him a lot because he was able to improve at the plate significantly. So if Wong can continue to do that and just – keep moving in that upward trajectory, he will be a strong catcher in the future for Boston. And obviously Reese McGuire is still here who, you know, is a backup catcher and that's all he really is. And that's fine. He's been serving his role. Okay. As a backup catcher. But if you have Teal and Wong as the two primary catchers, by the time that Teal is able to come up, that's a good combo. Like Wong's still learning some things and he's still, making adjustments out there, but you can tell he already has. And whatever the Red Sox are preaching has started to resonate with him. That's two really strong catchers in the system. So it was really exciting news out of the Red Sox farm that Kyle Teal was promoted already to high A. They only needed to see two games of him in the FCL before moving him up to Greenville. And that's really, really promising. I think he is showing a lot of potential. And obviously for us, you know, behind closed doors, we don't see everything and we don't get to watch him play and really see his mechanics and see how he's working and how he's getting better. But obviously there's something that the Red Sox see that 
it, they really, really like. So I'm excited to see what he can do. And I'm really glad the Red Sox are, you know, moving him through the system quickly because he was a really, really hyped prospect when the Red Sox drafted him. And it seems like he's living up to the hype. And that's always promising when you have a player who really is doing what he can and delivering in all assets of the game. So hopefully he continues to develop that really strong arm that he has and shows his athleticism because there's nothing more than like nothing better than having a really strong catcher, but also one who's completely diverse and can do a lot of different things on the field. That's all a bonus to me. So I'm really, really high on Teal. Hopefully he continues to work through the system quickly and can really help provide value to the Red Sox when he does come up. So let's hope that he can stay healthy and just insert his athleticism and be able to really show off that there's a reason he was the top rated catcher in the 2023 MLB draft class. The Red Sox are playing the Royals tonight at 7 PM um, in the second game of a four game series. Don't forget you can catch every pitch of the Red Sox home broadcast through Nesson on the Sirius XM app. Just download the Sirius XM app and search Red Sox and you won't miss a single pitch. Hopefully the Red Sox can win some games. They have a very, very soft part of the schedule now. And I'd like to think that they can really, really capitalize and just win these games coming up. If they want any chance to be back in it again, I lost a lot of hope after the series against Toronto because that was the absolute worst possible outcome. But if they can string together and win some of these games against less tough opponents, I'm all for it. Just get it done and do it. Got to keep the faith as much as you can, even though it's hard right now. Let's go Red Sox. Don't forget to download the Sirius XM app and you can catch every pitch of every Red Sox home broadcast. Go Red Sox. Take care. Catch you on the flip side.